Warning, the advice in this video contains one of the weirdest guitar technique and practicing metaphors ever captured on film. But if you embrace it and do what I show you, it could also potentially be one of the most useful things you've ever heard. When you watch your favorite guitarist play, one thing that always stands out is how effortless their technique looks feels and sounds. And the question is, how does it get to be this way? Why does playing guitar feel so easy for some people and so hard for so many others who also put in the time and practice every day to make their technique improve? Now you may say that the master players have simply practiced longer or they repeated something enough times to make it feel easy or they mastered excessive tension control in their technique. And all these things are likely true, but they're not the biggest reason why playing feels so easy and so automatic for some people. The answer has to do with something called guitar guitar technique schemas. In this video, I'm going to show you what guitar technique schemas are, how they benefit your playing, and how you can develop guitar technique schemas in your practicing so the playing guitar begins to feel easy for you as well. First, what the heck is a schema? A schema is like a jigsaw puzzle that's already been solved. We have countless schemas in our brain for all the tasks and all the skills we've already mastered and can do on autopilot without thinking. Everything from brushing your teeth, to driving your car, to tying your shoes, and yes, even playing your guitar. And your guitar playing consists, or should consist, of many different schemas. There's a sweep picking schema, there's a two hand tapping schema, there's a string bending schema, which by the way is more oral than physical because your ear dictates to your hands what to do to keep the note in tune. There is an improvising set of schemas, songwriting set of schemas, and so on. All of these skills are made up of various schemas. And schemas are made up of various micro elements of knowledge. Think of them like individual pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that we talked about earlier that have not been put together yet. And the faster you connect the individual pieces together, the faster you'll form your schemas, and then from schemas, you'll form your skills. And the difference between a pro level master player for whom everything is easy, or it looks easy, and a beginner or a struggling intermediate player for whom everything is hard, is that the master player thinks in terms of the bigger picture schemas while the intermediate player thinks in the individual elements that may or may not have been mastered or put together into schemas yet. Here are some of the things a beginner might think about. Bring the fretting hand up to the guitar by bending at the elbow. Keep the thumb behind the neck of the guitar. Put the fingertip on the string. Don't let the knuckle collapse. Keep other fingers low to the strings. Fret right next to the fret. Grip the pick with the thumb and index finger. Put the palm on the strings. Don't let the picking hand shoulder rise up. Angle the pick about 30 degrees. Fret and pick the string at the same time. Don't let the pick move in your hand. Don't let the pick bounce away from the string. Stop the pick between strings. Relax picking hand after plucking the string. Relax fretting hand finger when you finish playing. While a professional player might think about playing a note. Which one do you think is easier? Of course, the second one. It's much easier to just think of the schema of play a note and have these 16 individual elements be triggered instantly and not have to think about each one manually. And this is what makes schemas so incredibly powerful and useful. They speed up the recall mechanism in your muscle memory that allow you to do things faster, more efficiently, more accurately, and with less effort. Now, of course, all guitar players, no matter if you're a complete beginner, if you've only been playing guitar for an hour today for the first time, you already have some schemas in your guitar playing the same way as a guitar player who's been playing for 35 years has schemas in his guitar playing. When you're a beginner or early intermediate player, your biggest problem is that your schemas are simply too small. You still have to think about way too many individual pieces and your schemas aren't large enough to allow you to think fluently and accurately about your technique and recall motions very quickly. When you become an intermediate player, any bad habits you have in your technique are symptoms of incomplete or wrong schemas. Think about the jigsaw puzzle again. Imagine it's all put together, but the pieces in it are out of order. So it looks like it's complete, but the picture is all messed up. It's, the pieces are not where they're supposed to be, or somebody beat them in there with the fist because they weren't fitting right, so they forced them to make the appearance of a complete picture, but the picture is a mess. Going back to our earlier example of playing one note as a schema that consisted of 16 different elements, any of those, or a combination of them, could have been learned incorrectly into your muscle memory. And that would be an incorrectly learned schema. For example, instead of fretting a note with the fingertip like you're supposed to, maybe you learn that element incorrectly by fretting a note with the pad of the finger and also letting the knuckle collapse. So now two things are wrong. And now instead of angling the pick 30 degrees, you also keep the pick flat, which is not what you're supposed to do, or you let the pick bounce away from the string after the note. So now a whole bunch of things are wrong and your whole schema is messed up. And if you recall that schema of playing a note every time you try to play a scale, 
it's easy to see how it becomes a negative snowball of a bunch of crap that you program in your technique. The good news is though, everybody, I don't care if you're Paul Gilbert, John Petrucci, or whatever other name you wanna use, everybody has some inefficiencies in their guitar technique schemas. That is why people practice, and that is why people continue to get better year after year, because we continue refining our technique schemas one after the other, month after month, year after year, and that is what makes improvement possible. So how do you do this? How do you refine a guitar technique schema you already have, or how do you learn a brand new one? Well, we all know about muscle memory, but I like to break down muscle memory into three distinct components. The first of these is what I call the discovery phase, or the discovery part of the muscle memory. And this is where you simply understand what are the individual elements that go into a schema. For instance, when we talked about playing one note, I broke it down into 16 individual components. And making a list of those components is the discovery part of the muscle memory. This is where you simply intellectually understand what are the components that go into what will become your schema. Think of it like buying your jigsaw puzzle from Amazon, opening the box, dumping the pieces on the table, turning them on the right side up, and getting ready to put the puzzle together. That is the discovery phase of your muscle memory. The next part of your schema building muscle memory is called the working memory. This is where you take one of the elements from the discovery phase and drill it with your full attention, full concentration, and make sure you can do it right. And when something is in the working memory phase, you can only do it when you have 100% of your attention focused on that one nuance of technique. For instance, you may have an issue with moving the pick with the thumb and index finger. So when you play, you can only move the pick correctly from the wrist when you're focused on it 100%. If you focus on anything else and you're playing, if you even look at the fretting hand for a second, you go back to doing this. That means this element of playing for right now is still in the working memory phase. Or for example, you may struggle with having the pinky come down on the fingertip instead of the fleshy part, the pad, which is incorrect when you fret notes. And so you have to watch your finger like a hawk and make sure that every time you push the string down, you do it with the fingertip and not with the pad. Whatever the motions are, you have to take them through this process, starting first with the discovery phase, then the working memory, and eventually reaching the highest level, which is the schema level muscle memory. The most important part of working on something in the working memory phase of your schema building process is to not underestimate just how slowly you need to practice. I want you to think of training your guitar technique motions in this phase as if you're pouring water into this bucket using this thimble. And the bucket part of this analogy is like your brain. The water that goes in the bucket are the motor patterns you need to program into your muscle memory to make them automatic, to turn them into your schema. And the tool you have to pour water with is this tiny little thing called a thimble. And as you pour water one thimble at a time into your bucket, it will gradually fill up. And that is how you build your muscle memory and make your schema rock solid and dependable. And the reason I'm showing you these two silly props is to show you what happens when you go too fast with trying to fill your brain bucket. If you think about filling this tiny little thing up with water, what's the most efficient way to do it? Is it to let the fire hose go full blast and pour water into it? No, because when you turn the water off, there isn't gonna be even a drop left in here because it's all gonna spill out everywhere. But if you let the water drip slowly and carefully into this tiny little thimble thing, then you can fill it up to the edges, and when you go to pour it in your brain bucket, there's gonna be more water coming out. And when you practice something too quickly that's in the working memory phase of the schema building process, that's like filling a thimble with water from a fire hose. You're not gonna have any water left to program your brain with. But if you slow down and let the water drip carefully, then every repetition is gonna program perfection into your muscle memory instead of a bunch of crap that's just gonna slow you down. All right, so we've gone through the discovery phase, through the working memory phase, and now we are in the highest level, which is the schema building muscle memory. This is where we begin to take the individual components you refined in the working memory and now they begin to come together and connecting your brain into bigger and bigger schemas. So for example, from the 16 elements or so that go into playing a simple note, the first three are now internalized. Now you know that when you bend at the elbow, you're not supposed to shrug your shoulder, you do that automatically. You know you need to put your thumb behind the neck of the guitar instead of wrapping it around like this. And you know you need to fret the notes with a fingertip. And you do all three of these things without thinking. Now these things are becoming a schema. These things are becoming your muscle memory and these things are now easy for you. And the more of these elements you can stack on top of each other, the bigger and the more refined your schema becomes and the easier your playing starts to feel. And the two things that go wrong for people during this whole process is number one, not taking the time to really understand and make a list of all the individual elements that go into a certain schema. And then during the working memory phase, practicing way too fast, trying to fill your mental thimble with a 
fire hose. That is what's going to make your practice a complete waste of time, and that's how bad habits develop. If you want to know more about the individual biomechanics that go into various schemas for the picking hand and the fretting hand, check out my other videos on this topic where I break this stuff down in detail, show you what mistakes to avoid, and also the right way to do things in the picking hand and the fretting hand so you can build your guitar technique schemas much faster. And if you want some help with building your guitar speed once you have your guitar technique schemas in place, if you want to know what do you actually do with the metronome to make speed appear, hit the link below. I'm going to show you a new way to practice to build your speed that doesn't require any slow practice. So you're not going to be starting slow and gradually building up speed in small increments. If you already tried that, you already know that this doesn't really work as well as everybody promised that it would, check out the link below. I'm going to show you a different way to do it. It's free. Enter your email address. I'll send it right over to you. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you know every time I upload a new video just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.